What is going on, FA Nation? It's John Pembe here bringing you your MLB DFS Game Day Playbook Preview Show for the Tuesday 13 game main slate. Uh, riding solo today here for this show. So uh, we will go position by position. We appreciate you guys all tuning in. Want to hit that like, hit that subscribe button. It's a free way to support the work we do here over on the Fantasy Alarm channel. Of course, we'll be back here live at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Myself and Henry Wilson taking you through this 13 game main slate and it is a doozy it's chock full of some pretty solid matchups here we don't have course field on the slate so we don't have to worry about that impact here at all but you can just quickly see uh, at the top of the pitching here cole reagan's zach wheeler louis heel your top priced starting pitchers here nobody up over ten thousand on this slate we had the 10k pitcher on monday uh in that spot with michael king but reagan's your top price guy here in a great spot against the Los Angeles Angels, of course. Wheeler going up again against an Atlanta team that's without Austin Riley now for the next six to eight weeks, and Louis Heal at home against a tough Cleveland team. Uh, if I had to go about and obviously pick my two starters here, it would be the top two guys. Uh, anytime you get a matchup against the Angels is going to be a fruitful one here, and even though Reagan's earlier this year struggled in that matchup against the Angels, this is not the same Angels team that earlier on in the season had a lot of success against left-handed pitching. They're actually now ranking down towards the bottom of the league against left-handed pitching. Uh, Reagan's coming off of seven innings, one earned eight strikeouts uh, against Minnesota in his last appearance. He's now home, big favorite here against the Angels. So you have him at 95. You have Zach Wheeler here again, coming off of a pretty strong matchup as well. Against Washington, six innings earned, six Ks. At Arizona, six innings, two earned, eight Ks. At Seattle, eight shutout, nine strikeouts. So he's an ace. He's pitching like an ace, has a matchup against Atlanta. He shut them out earlier this year. We know Atlanta's, uh, well, they have picked up their offense a little bit. You know, this is still a matchup uh, that we're looking to target. I'm not too concerned uh, with Michael Harris coming back, obviously losing Austin Riley, a big bat in their lineup, uh, still going to be an impact there. Atlanta, the fifth highest strikeout rate on the year against right-handed pitching. And over the last 30 days, uh, you see Atlanta sitting there at a 25% strikeout rate against right-handed pitching. So it should still be a pretty strong matchup for Zach Wheeler. If you're going down a little bit further here, I'm not going to go run out Blanco against Boston. That offense against right-handed pitching has just been tearing it up. Uh, but I do like Robbie Ray. Yes, I understand against Atlanta, uh, he got lit. Two-thirds of an inning, gave up just one hit. Okay, he hit two batters, he walked two batters, and he gave up the grand slam to Michael Harris, and that was Curtin's. Uh, for Robbie Ray in that start. I'm expecting him to bounce back here. Matchup against the Chicago White Sox. He's going to be a big favorite on the board. Uh, White Sox over the last 30 days, a 28% strikeout rate against left-handed pitching, an 053 ISO, a 185 average, and a 212 Woba. Of course, the White Sox also facing a lefty on Monday. We'll see how Kyle Harrison fa uh, fares in that spot, but liking Robbie Ray, expecting a big bounce back performance here. $8,600, certainly a guy I'm going to be looking to target in lineups. Uh, below Ray, I actually think Cody Bradford is kind of in an interesting spot here. Um, you know, overall, been pretty good for the Rangers this season. Minnesota in New York, his last two starts, pretty impressive. Six innings, two earned against Minnesota. Five innings, one earned, seven Ks against New York. Uh, Pittsburgh as a whole as an offense here, fifth highest strikeout rate over the last 30 days against left-handed pitching, 28.8%. Power numbers are pretty high up there. Um, overall, their offense has certainly been laying the lumber against Southpaws. But I do like the strikeout rate. Uh, and Bradford here at home should be a favorite. So if you want to chase the strikeouts at Bradford, I don't mind the $8,100 price tag given his current form. Going a little bit further down, we got Jose Berrios. Three of his last four starts have been pretty dominant. Seven innings, one earned allowed in each in those three starts there. Ignore the Yankees in New York. He faced L.A., Oakland, Texas. Shut them all down. Has Cincinnati in this matchup. I know they'll get him away from the Great American Ballpark, and that offense is a little bit different than they are when they're on the at home. Uh, so I'm still willing to go Jose Barrios here, uh, pitching at home against Cincinnati in the 8K tier. Uh, you want to go a little bit further down. I feel like the value does kind of drop off a little bit, but you have Shane Baz against Oakland. Oakland's offense has certainly started to downturn a little bit. Baz himself coming off one of his best starts of his career, honestly, against Houston, seven innings, three earned, six strikeouts. Got the loss, but still gave you 16 fantasy points. We know the talent is there with this kid. If you can just kind of limit the damage, the walks certainly been a little bit of a problem. The two homers last time out 
or is what get him in, but definitely a good matchup for him to take advantage of against Oakland. A little bit further down, you have Martin Perez. Two starts for him with the Padres. He's been fantastic. Uh, 12 and a third innings, three earned runs over those last two outings. Uh, Colorado, six innings, and earned run there. So uh, you got him now in a spot against Minnesota. At home, good pitcher's ballpark here. Minnesota, we know as an offense, that obviously has some power. Martin Perez, you know, not exactly in his greatest form as a member of the Pirates, but seemingly turned things around here with Minnesota or against uh, Minnesota here with the Padres. So you want to give him a look at $6,800. And as we hit the 6K tier, I think it's important to remember these are dart throws on a 13-game slate. Maybe you're building 20 lineups. Uh, you want to get some exposure to save some money. I think these would be some of the ones to target. Perez, Matthew Boyd made his season debut against the Cubs, five and a third innings. One earned six strikeouts. Now he has the Yankees. And while obviously Aaron Judge and Juan Soto strike fear in many, uh, if you're playing one of these like give me a reason spots uh, against left-handed pitching over the last two weeks, plate appearance wise, the Yankees have faced the fourth most plate appearances against Southpaw. So pretty healthy sample size over the last two weeks here. Uh, 161 ISO, 301 Woba, 221 batting average. 221 batting average for the Yankees is 21st. Uh, and Woba, they're 21st. In isolated power, they are 14th. Again, give you a reason to play Matthew Boyd, $6,600 off a good debut. Uh, those numbers the last two weeks for the Yankees, not especially great against Southpaws. And then my last guy here is going to be Joey Estes. You know, Tampa Bay against right handed pitching has not been very good this season. Obviously, they made some deals to trade away some of their better offensive players as well. Uh, overall, 27th in Woba over the last couple of weeks here against right-handed pitching, uh, coming in at a 285 Woba during that stretch, 111 ISO, 238 batting average against right-handed pitching. So that's a bottom 20 team in all those categories there against right-handed pitching. Then you can go look at the home road splits here. Joey Estes has been dominant at home this season, 2-4 ERA. 18 and a half fantasy points in seven games uh, is average here for Joey Estes at home. $6,300. I am perfectly okay at $6,300 on a 13 game slate just playing these splits here. Because again, last two weeks, bottom 20 team in offense against right handed pitching for the Tampa Bay Rays. Overall, this season, they've been one of the worst teams in baseball against right handed pitching. They're right up there with strikeout rate as well. So uh, give me some Joey Estes at $6,300 as a pun play on this slate at starting pitching. Moving on over to catcher, we generally look for some value here. Uh, for, uh, Francisco Alvarez against Dean Kramer. Uh, James McCann maybe in the lineup. This guy has historically hit left-handed pitching pretty well. $2,800, 313 over his last 10, 10 for 32 of the dish. If you're going to tell me he's $2,800 and he's in that lineup uh, against Quintana, a lefty, I'm willing to go there. Uh, we are big on stacking against Carson Spires. That will be a trend on today's show. You got Alejandro Kirk. It's in the middle of that lineup. He's down here uh, in this uh, 3K price range as well, uh, $3,400. Uh, Joey Bart gets a lefty, uh, $3,800 for Bart, one of the hottest hitters at the position. And then obviously Cal Raleigh, uh, can't go wrong here. Walker Bueller, the matchup. We know Bueller struggles this season. We know the power for Cal Raleigh, especially uh, against right-handed pitching. So catcher position there. Over at first base, you can always play Otani or Freeman. Both of them have Bryce Miller uh, in this matchup. We are all in on Vlad Guerrero in on the Monday slate. He homered in his first at bat. Uh, we go right back to the well here against Carson Spires of fifty six hundred dollars. Uh, liking Vladdy, big home splits here three forty two nine seventy three OPS. Uh, only going up after the Monday performance as well. Uh, Tristan Casas against Ronald Blanco. Casas has been pretty good. Since being activated off the IL, two hits in each of the last two games, runs in all three. We know the power is going to be there. We know Blanco's had some regression indicators this season. So $4,700, I like the Red Sox righties, uh, or sorry, Red Sox offense against right handed pitching here uh, this season. And Costa's back only strengthens uh, the upside of that play. Uh, you go Alec Burleson, I think, lefty on righty against Frankie Montas at $4,400 uh, in St. Louis. I think Montas is going to struggle here. I don't really love the Cardinals as a whole, but there certainly are some plays, uh, and Burleson, I think, is going to be one of them. Torgelson is back. Uh, had a good debut in his return. Two hits, a double, and a triple. I think there's some upside here. This is a guy that hit 30-plus home runs last year. Top prospect in that Tigers organization. Spent a lot of this year in the minors. 
because of his struggles to begin the season. That he's back now. I think there's some potential for him to get going against Javier Assad at $4,200. Got Ryan Mountcastle at 4K against Quintana, the righty lefty matchup. And Luke Rayleigh for me down here at $3,900 against Walker Bueller would be my first base plays for the day. At second base, if you want to spend up, you can. Jose Altuve, Marcus Simeon, even Brandon Lau, if you're not in on the Joe Yeses play, certainly worth some consideration. But this is another spot where I'm looking to spend down. Uh, Gavin Lux against Bryce Miller at $3,900. Spencer Horowitz against Carson Spires or Will Wagner against Carson Spires. Wagner's $2,500 all the way down here. Uh, you can save some money with him. We've been riding that play. Uh, Tommy Edmond is making his debut on Monday. He's at second base eligibility here for the Dodgers at $3,500. And Nolan Gorman, again, a lefty power bat against Frankie Montes in St. Louis uh, is a play that I'm willing to kind of plug into a lineup despite his recent struggles. Again, I just don't think much of Frankie Montes here this season or in this matchup overall. At third base, Again, if you want to spend up, you certainly can. Rafael Devers would be my pick against Ronald Blanco at $5,900. You have Max Muncie activated off the IL against Bryce Miller. We know he's a big power bat. Lefty side of the plate here against Bryce Miller at $4,700. Uh, and then we have a Junior Caminero, someone that we've been waiting for a big breakout game out of him. Again, if you're not in on Joe Yestis, I think this is a spot. Still at $3,100. Has stolen base upside. Has ridiculous power as well. Again, only three guys for me I'm really looking for at third base. Maybe when the official lineups come out, that will change, but those are the three I'm digging into. Devers, Muncy, and Caminero. Shortstop's a little bit more thick here. You have Bobby Witt Jr. up at the top. You have Francisco Lindor in a spot against Dean Kramer. Corey Seager, at least at the time of recording, is homered in back-to-back at-bats to start the game against uh, Louis Ortiz. He's got Mitch Keller here at $5,300. I definitely like Corey Seager. Uh, one of our favorite plays overall of the day uh, coming through big time. In the mid-tier, it's Willie Castro. Big numbers against lefties for him this year. Gets the Martin Perez matchup. And then our value play uh, as we work our way down. I like IKF or Ernie Clement. IKF gets the righty-lefty matchup against Bradford. Ernie Clement against Carson Spires at $3,500. Uh, and then the outfield, there's a ton of them. You can kind of pick your top play in your stack. Otani, Betts, Judge, Alvarez, Duran, Santander, for me, I think you pick any of those guys in that 5K range. You want to go Riley Green in a stack against Assad, you can as well. If I had to pick one guy, I'm going to go Jordan Alvarez. Uh, Nick Pavetta, as we've seen, can be a guy that goes out there and shuts everybody down and strikes out a bunch of guys, or he gives up a whole lot of runs. Liking Jordan at 6K here in this matchup against Nick Pavetta. Going down into the mid-tier, you have Randy Rosarena. Uh, against Walker Bueller. I think there's some play there for Seattle against the Dodgers here. Seattle's offense has been much better outside of Seattle this season. For the Red Sox, you have Yoshida and Abreu in this mid-tier against Blanco. Kerry Carpenter against Assad, I think, is a strong play as well. Jackson Chorio against Eric Fetty, I think, is someone you can go to with the power speed potential uh, for him there. I know he's started to slow down a little bit out of that Cleveland series, but he went into it uh, red hot there. Jesse Winker against Dean Kramer is going to hit in the middle of their lineup. He's in the 3K range at 38. Uh, Eloy Jimenez against a lefty, still down here uh, at like $3,400 against Jose Quintana. Parker Meadows, if you like more Detroit bats, against Assad at $3,300. And then we can't leave this show without talking about Dario Blanco. He's in the lineup against the lefties, uh, the two games in Cincinnati. Three homers, eight RBIs. We know he's known for his speed. If he's in the lineup, I'm going to play him or at least give him some consideration against the lefty in Tyler Anderson. You just can't ignore a guy uh, that has three homers and eight RBIs over his last two games. Uh, point of the show where we build a lineup. And again, we'll be back live at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Review all these slates again with the latest news, updates, ownership. Uh, Henry Wilson's on the playbook. He'll be here uh, to break down his top plays with us as well. Mentioned Robbie Ray being my number one guy. You're going to plug him in. Uh, and then I'm really loving and digging in on this matchup uh, for Cole Reagans against the Angels. So 39.87. Gonna need to find some value, and I think we have that at second base. We're gonna go all the way down uh, to our guy Will Wagner, $2,500. Save us some money there uh, at catcher as well. Gonna look for a little value again. I'm gonna play James McCann. I think there's a chance he's in the lineup at $2,800, and I think this is a good spot for him. If Carantini ends up in the lineup, I also don't mind him at $2,900. So that's $44.53.
uh, certainly getting us up some a little bit more value. We're going to ride the Blanco train, as I mentioned, in the outfield, $3,100 coming off the three homer. So that's $4,700. Third base, uh, let's go. Yeah, I like the Red Sox. Let's go Devers here. First base, we'll do Casas then. We'll do a little Red Sox stack. $4,300. In the shortstop, let's go a Junior Caminero. Uh, is he a shortstop eligibility? He did. Did they take away a shortstop? He was 31. Caminero, there we go. All right, $4,900. So we can get probably get Duran in at 58 and then a 4K outfielder to complete the lineup. We will go with Luke Raley. Here we go. One off Seattle Raley play. So Ray, Reagans, McCann, Casas, Wagner, Devers, Caminero, Blanco, Duran, Raley. We're going to Red Sox stack here against uh, Ronel Blanco. Uh, again, if you have any questions, make sure you follow us over on the X Machine. Get in the Discord. Uh, become a member of the Fantasy Alarm family as well. Right now is your time to sign up. Uh, you get that first month if you use promo code Let's Go for less than $20. Uh, that means you get the first couple of weeks of the NFL DFS season included in that first month. If you haven't had your draft yet, your draft guide and cheat sheet included in the All Pro package. So now is really the best time to take advantage of all of our offerings for fantasy football, DFS, and seasonal draft guide, cheat sheet, and of course, all of our premium content for MLB, golf, uh, NASCAR. MMA, PGA, you name it, we cover it here uh, over on FantasyAlarm.com. So, again, FantasyAlarm.com slash win, promo code Let's Go. We'll be back at 5 p.m., everybody. Till then, we'll catch you later.